How to price post-construction cleanup. Steve Hansen here, co-founder of the janitorialstore.com and myhousecleaningbiz.com. Well, you know, that's a question I often get asked uh, by many people on online, uh, in face group, uh, Facebook groups and uh, on, uh, on chat. And, you know, uh, there's really no one answer uh, because every job is different. And, um, you know, the prices are going to vary. Uh, they're going to vary by the location that you're in, you know, the city you're in, and so on and so forth. But I can tell you this, that when it comes to post-construction cleanup, uh, from my research, what I've found is that uh, on average, your average pricing for a, rough, for a rough clean is 10 to 15 cents a square foot. Okay? And then for uh, a final clean, it will range anywhere from 15 to 30 cents a square foot. And then for a touch-up or a light clean, that's usually six to twelve cents a square foot. Um, you know, those are averages. You know, so don't be, you know, sending me a uh, note and saying, "Well, Steve, you said this, you said that." Those are averages. So you know, your prices could actually be lower and higher. You know, I've done projects where uh, the the square foot price was forty-five cents a square foot. I've done one where it was a dollar twenty-five a, a square foot. Um, you know, the lowest job I've ever, I've ever done was 15 cents a square foot. So, you know, it does vary. Um, but, you know, the, the thing is that uh, just like anything else that we do when we're doing a post-construction cleanup, you know, we have to do a walkthrough. We have to ask a lot of good questions. You know, by asking a lot of good questions, you're going to be able to uncover exactly what the, the general contractor wants. You know, uh, generally you're going to be working with a superintendent uh, or site manager. So, you know, uh, ask them, you know, how many phases uh, is this going to be? You know, are, are you going to have a rough clean, a final clean, a, you know, light clean? You know, how many phases? We have to know that, you know, and what kind of a time period are we going to have, you know, uh, for this project? All these things will, are, will affect your price, you know, because in some cases, if they call you in and say, well, we're going to do, uh, you know, a two-phase clean, where we want you to come in and do a rough clean, and then a month later, we're going to have you come in and do a final clean, well, you want to take that into consideration uh, for your pricing. Now, you know, some companies too, you know, they'll, they'll say, okay, we just want a one-time final clean. Okay, so great. So then, you know, you want to make sure that you ask about, okay, when, when's it going to be completed? When can we start cleaning? And how long, how much time do we have to complete the clean? Very important. You know, again, because some of these projects, you know, they could be relatively small, a couple thousand square feet, or they could be a hundred thousand square feet plus. So we have to ask these questions because in order to price correctly, we have to know this. We have to know how much time do we have because let's say, for example, we're doing a 50,000 square foot facility and they're telling us that we have four days to complete the, the final clean. Well, then what's that tell you? Well, that obviously tells you how many people you're going to need to be on the crew to get that done in four days. So, you know, it's, now that you know, know what your labor is going to cost you, that's going to help you. Uh, arrive at a, a price that you will uh, give for the job. So we have to know those things. Uh, you know, and also uh, if there's anything that has to be done outside, you know, such as a garbage pickup or, or whatever it may be, you know, find out if they're going to provide the dumpsters, uh, you know, find out about water, find out about elect electrical, you know, because again, these things are going to affect your price. You go to a, a post-construction cleanup job and there's no water, well, that means that you have to haul it in. You know, and that, that means that's more work on your part. So are you going to charge extra for that? Well, maybe some people might not and some others will. You know, the same thing is if, if the, uh, there's no electrical. What do you do? How are you going to run vacuums and other things, uh, you know, in order to complete your job? Well, does that mean you got to bring in generators or, you know, what do you got to do? Those all affect your price on a post-construction cleanup job. So, you know, these are all questions that you want to ask. And, and make sure that you got contact information. So if you uh, arrive at the job and uh, and some of these things aren't met, that you have somebody to call and find out. You know, okay, what's going on? You know, um, so very very important. So again, you know, um, we uh, on on the janitorial story, you're going to find a, we got a, a post construction uh, calculator, and it really helps you because uh, the one thing. If you're doing post-construction cleanup, it's just like any other service that you provide. You should be tracking and knowing your numbers. Very important. You know, so, for example, we know for a fact that our 
our one time final clean uh, uh, production rate is 150 square feet per hour. We know that and it's based off of our uh, off of our general list, uh, our scope of work that we perform for our final clean. So, you know, that's what's important is that you first of all have to identify what that scope of work is and then, then associate a price to it. One thing I found over the years is that when you start doing customized stuff, uh, that can be a real hassle, you know, so, uh, and it's fine. So typically what we do is we try to limit that. Uh, we'll have our, our general scope of work now, if they want to add anything to that, then we're going to obviously charge more. And we try to limit that to maybe there's only three additional items or something that they want done. You know, because some of these people, they'll get carried away on, on you know, what they want done. And, you know, uh, you know, you, you can, you, obviously you can give them a price on that, but, you know, the more they want, the more it's going to cost them. So, anyway, um, so those are all things that you want to keep in mind when you're pricing post-construction cleanup. You know, um, it, it's a it's a great business. You know, we've done a lot of it, uh, an awful lot of it. And uh, what we did is we actually we built uh, relationships with the general contractors. And uh, so as they started uh, uh, getting building permission, things like that there, they'd keep us in the loop. So we know exactly where the project was, what the size was, and so on and so forth. Now here's something, here's a little tip for everybody. That if you are providing uh, post-construction cleanup, you better be going after that building, after that account. Why not? You're doing the post-construction cleanup. Find out who's moving into that facility. You know, who's going to be leasing it? Who, who's moving in? Is it the owner? Is it, is it somebody that they're leasing it to? In either case, find out so you can go and talk to those folks about reoccurring service. So hopefully it's a, it's a service that you can provide, you know, five days a week, three days a week, uh, whatever it is. But uh, if you're not doing that, you're leaving a lot of money on the table. You know, because those reoccurring services is really what generates you a lot of revenue. Everybody knows that post-construction cleanup is a service that is either feast or famine. Uh, either, either you're just busier and heck, or then there's slow time. Well, what do you do in the slow time? Well, if that's all you're focused on is just post-construction cleanup, that could be a pretty tough model to, to sustain. So you got to have something that's reoccurring, and that's the best way to do that, is to pick up reoccurring accounts as you're doing your post-construction cleanup. So... Uh, you'll generate a lot of money that way. Uh, something else that you want to consider in post-construction cleanup is uh, window washing. Now the window washing, uh, you have to think about this because that should be an additional uh, add-on service. Uh, you, can always, you can always bundle your stuff together and give it one, you know, one, uh, full, one price, but it's always good to price things separately. So we go in and we do our post-construction cleanup on a final clean. Let's say they want some hard floor uh, stripped and wax. They got some VCT or whatever. So we, we give a price on that. Uh, we can do that. Uh, windows inside and out. You know, when you look at the windows, we have to identify have they been covered during the post-construction or during the construction phase. Uh, because many times, as you guys know, the people that have done post-construction cleanup, you can have uh, drywall mud, paint, uh, you can have uh, burns from grinders uh, uh, pitting the windows and things like that. You don't want to be blamed for that. So you have to watch for those things. You know, ask, what, were the windows covered? And if not, then, you know, have them sign a waiver. Uh, we actually have a waiver in our download library uh, just for that. Uh, because when, you, when it occurs that they have not covered the windows during construction, well, now we have to use un unconventional methods to clean the windows meaning that we have to scrape them. So that takes longer, there's more risk of scratching the window because of the debris and stuff, and uh, you just want to make sure that you, you protect yourself uh, in that case. Uh, so always do that when, when you're talking about uh, cleaning windows. So, but hopefully this has helped you. Um, you know, again, you know, your pricing, the pricing of your post-construction cleanup is going to vary. Uh, there's a lot of variables, but if you if you just start with those averages that I gave you uh, and arrive at a price point and hopefully you have a calculator like we do on the janitorial store you can run these numbers out and you'll know exactly what your profit is uh, then there's no guessing game you know you know if you're gonna make 20 percent 50 percent or whatever it is uh, and you know everybody has to know how much profit they're making on the job just because you give a price point doesn't mean nothing we have to know what we're making for a profit and you know that uh, that percentage will de determine you know what price point you're going to go at. So um, 
That's about it. I uh, hope you liked it. And if you did, uh, go ahead and click on the uh, uh, like and share button. And as usual, you know, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, uh, we've have, we have hundreds of uh, YouTube videos on how to build a successful cleaning, uh, cleaning business. Just click on the subscribe button. Until next time, we'll see you.